so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my ingredients, also my tools, and a little bit about where I want to go with all these videos. Um, so first of all, the ingredients that I use. My recipe does not involve silicone. I use, as my pouring mediums, a combination of the Golden 800, which reduces crazing, also has a nice gloss finish, and makes your paint a little more um, adhesive to the substrate. The crazing is uh, as the paint dries from the surface down, if it dries too quickly on the surface and the paint underneath does not dry quickly enough, you could end up with some cracks on the surface and that totally changes the whole look of your artwork and it's not in a good way. Uh, then we have the Flood Floetrol. This ingredient is um, what house painters use to, uh, add, they add it to their sprayers, they add it to the paint before they put it through the sprayers, makes it go through the sprayers faster. It is a, um, it makes the paint go farther, it also, uh, it, it adds to the leveling properties of your paint, so if you're pushing it around, it will level back out almost like a resin. Then we have the paint itself, golden acrylic paint, uh, and I do coat my artworks in resin, and so I have the Art & Glow resin over there. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, why do I use golden acrylic paints? Well, I am I'm loyal to golden acrylic paints because of their awesome quality, the amount of research they have put into making good paint, as well as the resources that they provide to their customers. For instance, they provide a density chart. If you know the specific gravity of your pigments, then you don't need to use silicone because if your, and it is, if your titanium white is more dense than your Hansa yellow medium, then when you paint, when you swipe the white over top of the yellow, uh, they want to switch places. The white wants to go down and the yellow wants to come up, and that is how you get your cellular formations. Or if you were doing a flip cup, then if you put your white on the bottom, then yellow, and then flipped it, um, then the white is going to want to go back to the bottom, yellow is going to want to come to the top, you get your uh, your cellular formations that way. I've done it, it works, and you don't have to use silicone. Silicone, we don't know how that... Another thing, an article I read on the Golden website talks about how if not all the silicone gets to the surface, you could possibly end up with silicone trapped inside the painting itself and that doesn't dry, it's petroleum based. It never dries and, and you could weaken your painting overall. They also have uh, really helpful color mixing guides. They explain, this is not a good copy, I'm not gonna try to have you read it, but it does explain how pigment mixing works differently than color mixing and they also provide very nice charts that show you which colors you should buy which are these here at the top you have titanium white zinc white quinacridone magenta naphthol red hansa yellow medium phthalo green phthalo blue and yellow ochre um, the color wheel looks something like this um, I have purchased those colors except for, with the exception of the yellow ochre, and the reason is that I, uh, saw on here that I wasn't planning on mixing any of the colors that required that, but to show you a little bit of how it works, you have, if you wanted to make primary green, you would use 30 parts of Hansa Yellow Medium and one part of phthalo green and you would mix them together and get primary green. So you can really uh, experiment, but also if you want to just make a specific color, you have the recipe. 
I mix them up in containers that have lids so that I, if I don't use it all, I could use it next time. Or I could, if I don't have a lot of time from day to day, I could mix one day and paint the next day. Um, also, they just have a lot, Golden. back to why I use Golden, um, their website is just full of instructional videos and articles and they have a great newsletter. I would just highly recommend checking them out. Uh, the tools that I use, again, I use these mixing cups. Um, I have a couple of paints here left over. This is a yellow ochre that I made. I'm not too happy with it. This is a a mess that I made. <clears throat> I had made a, a lavender and I just am not a big fan of pink and purple so I tried to mask it. Anyways, the, all my other paints are used up and need to mix more but these, since I didn't really like them, I still have those around to show you. Um, then I have stir sticks of various sorts. I I love using chopsticks, especially this one because um, it it's not broken yet so you have the double thickness which is really nice for swiping um, or for stirring uh, I have straws they're helpful for blowing around the paint if you have a crisp edge that you just don't want a crisp edge in that spot crisp edges are nice but not everywhere um, also you could instead of swiping the white over you could blow the white onto another area with the straw. Palette knives, of course, are always helpful. I've got my mixing spoons and my measuring cups. As you see there, I, I did put some out. Those are specifically just to give you a visual of my recipe. So four parts of the GAP 800, two parts of the Floetrol. There's two cups there and one part of paint. Four cups, two cups, one cup. So you really do go through a lot of GAC 800, but man, it makes a nice painting. You will need um, another size cup too, probably. I have done some dirty pours and some flip cups with this size. Um, if you are doing maybe a 10 by 10 painting and you uh, have a nice wet surface that the painting has been primed with a white, then you could do a flip cup this size and, and have a successful coverage. Otherwise, you probably want to use something more this size. Um, a flip cup is, like I said, you layer the paint in there. You would put your canvas on top and flip it over and then release the paint. Uh, dirty pour is when you layer the paint in there and then you uh, a lot of people like to sort of wiggle it as they go and it leaves really cool ripples. Um, but you, you release the paint and it comes out in, in the way you put it in there layer wise, but um, it, it makes a really neat effect. You should play around with it if you haven't. Also, I bought a box of about a thousand popsicle sticks, craft sticks, um, off of Amazon and they've been really helpful as well. I like to use those. I also, oops, I use old uh, gift cards, used up gift cards and business cards for swiping because they're soft and flexible. So you don't, you're not risking pushing down to the to the substrate uh, because they're flexible. I love this. I is this what is it called? smoothing tool. I've been calling it a putty knife, but obviously it's not a putty knife. Um, so again, with the flip cup, if if you had primed the surface with wet paint, and so you couldn't do this, you couldn't put your canvas on top of here and then flip it because you've got a bunch of wet paint on your canvas, what you can do is you've got your wet canvas over here and you have your paint. You can use this lovely tool to then flip it and drop it onto your painting. Also, of course, this is great for the swiping technique. Uh, another tool that I would like to go over that I use are, um, 
is the resin, of course. Um, so I've tried several brands. I have tried, first I tried East Coast Resin, I've tried Art Resin, and now I have tried Art and Glow Resin. I think that they all work great. I have no complaints about any of them. The only one would be the price difference. Um, Art, Art and Glow, I believe, is the cheapest. You can find them all on Amazon. Art and Glow seems to be the cheapest. East Coast Resin is right in there at the low price point. Art Resin brand is more expensive. So you might be asking why are there two different containers and why do they look different? Resin is sold to you in two parts that you have to combine in order to create the chemical reaction. You have the resin and you have the hardener. Resin itself is soft, liquidy, and sticky. When you add the hardener to it, it creates a, it bonds to create a new molecule and it becomes a solid. You will need these mixing cups. It's really nice to have something that is translucent so that you can see where your liquid is in the container as far as what level it is so that you can then double it because it is simple but it needs to be exact. It's half and half. So you would theoretically fill up your container to 8 ounces and then with the resin and then to 16 ounces with the hardener and you have to stir for a good 3 to 5 minutes. Um, <clears throat> the the East Coast resin provided a really nice, um, a really nice instructional pamphlet that I have used with all my resins uh, that explained square footage wise how to estimate how much to mix, and I have really appreciated that. And don't forget your gloves because it is sticky and messy, and you will definitely want those. It's not good to, to make contact with the skin. And you can clean up with uh, rubbing alcohol off of your skin or your tools. Um, that is it as far as what I use and why I use it. I would highly recommend trying the Golden Brands and moving away from the silicone. Um, but I, I know that price is an issue. I, I recommend for my students that they try... Um, just simply, I mean, if you're looking for a shoestring budget, this is not the recipe for you, but you could simply do paint and Elmer's glue and silicone and a little bit of water, but you're not going to want to sell that painting, um, and you're probably not going to really like the results. Liquitex pouring medium, a lot of people have results with that as well as the flood flow trawl with the uh, silicone. I just really think that GAC 800 is a high quality product and it makes a high quality painting and I have loved the results that I get from it. So highly recommend, worth the cost. <clears throat> it's not cheap though. Um, that's all for now. I really, once school's out for the summer, plan to make lots of demonstration videos, lots of uh, painting videos where you get to watch me paint and I hope that uh, you will continue to follow me, subscribe, like my videos, check me out in the future, see what's going on. Check out my website. I have a website. It is cholsherart.com. The link to it will be in the description. Thanks.